Welcome to Python 3 Beginner 3, Input and Output. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can interact with our Python program on the command line. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Python makes this very easy for us, providing us with simple, easy to use functions. We've even used the main output function already, print. During this video, we'll look at customizing our output to the prompt and making it look nicer and better to read. First, let's have a quick look at making our outputs nicer. So in the interpreter, we can create a variable called name and let's set it to our name. So I'll come over to the interpreter and we're gonna create a variable called name and we're gonna make it equal our name. So open quotes, I'm gonna do draps, close quotes. Okay, so now I've created a variable called name and it has our name in it. So let's try and print it out. So we're gonna go print, open brackets, and this time we're gonna add a hard-coded string. So let's go open quotes, hello, comma, my name is space, close quotes. And in Python, we can add strings together using the plus symbol. So let's go plus and then name, so our variable name. And then we're gonna close our circle brackets. Now, when we hit enter, we get hello, my name is draps and it outputs the value that was inside our name variable. Alternatively, with our print statement, instead of using a plus, we can use a comma instead, but we must remove the space at the end of our hard-coded string, as the comma will automatically add it for us. And as you see, we get the same output. Hello, my name is Draps. <coughs> okay, so, you may be asking, why didn't we just print out hello my name is draps rather than using a name variable and adding it on? Well this sets us up for much more, di more dynamic code. Let's look at some input and I'll show you what we're talking about. Okay, to get input from the user we have an easy to use function, input. Input gets a string from the user and puts it into a variable of our choosing. So let's set our variable name to equal the user's input. Okay, so over here in our interpreter, our name name variable is going to equal input input open circle brackets, and now we can put in a string to ask the user. So open up quotes, please enter your name. Close quotes. Okay. So we're going to ask the user to enter their name. Now, when we hit enter and execute this line the console is going to ask us for a name. So if we hit enter, we see the console says, please enter your name. Okay, so let's do Fred. Now when we hit enter, you see we're back into the interpreter now and it's waiting for another command. So let's do our printout again. Let's print out, hello, my name is, and then the name. And as you can see, we get, hello, my name is Fred, the name that was entered by the user. Now, since we've been doing this on the interpreter, we can't really see the true strength of getting user input. So let's create a Python code file. This is a text file with all of our commands put in it in, in order of how they will be executed. So let's open our favorite text editor and start writing some Python code. I will be using Vim, a, a command line text editor. So if we come back over to Linux, and we can exit out of the interpreter by typing exit, open brackets, close brackets. Okay, now I'm going to be using vim, so I type vim, and then the file name. So let's call it 23.py. Now, now that we're inside vim, we can press A to start insert mode, and we can start typing our Python code. So let's get our variable name, and we're going to create it and make it equal the input from the user, open circle brackets, and then our prompt, so open quotes, please enter your name, do a little colon, space, close quotes, and close brackets. And now on the next line of our text file, we're going to print, open circle brackets, and then we're going to say, open quotes, hello, space, close quotes, plus our name variable, plus open quotes, comma, space, Thank you for using my first program, exclamation mark. 
and then we're going to close quotes and then close off our print. Okay, so now we have our two commands. So the name equals input will be executed first and then our print hello name, thank you for using my first program, will be executed second. So if you're using Vim like me, we can now save and quit. So we press escape, colon, WQ for write and then quit. And hit enter and we exit out of Vim and save our file. Okay, to run Python files on Linux, we just simply type Python 3 space and then our file name that we want to execute and it will run our program. If you're on Windows, right click on your file and hit open in idle. Then up the top you can hit the run and then select run module or you can just type the file name in the command line. Okay, so we'll come over, we we'll type python3 2.3.py. Now when we hit it, we see the console asks us, please enter your name. So let's, I'll enter in draps. And we get hello draps, thank you for using my first program. And then our program finishes and we're back to the command line. Now while this is cool, let's create something a little bit more useful. So let's edit our 2.3.py file and make a multiplication program. Okay, so we're going to get two numbers from the user, times them together and output them to the console. Okay, so vim 2.3.py and A again to get into insert mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a print at the, on the first line, so we're going to print open circle brackets and we're going to hard code a string saying welcome to multiply exclamation mark close quotes and then close our print off now we're going to get our first number so num1 so instead of name we're going to have num1 and that's going to equal input and then we're going to ask them for their first number so let's go please enter your first number. Okay, and now around our input, we're going to have some, other bra uh, some more brackets. So, and we're going to use the int function. So int, open bracket, input, please enter your first number, close bracket, close bracket. So what this is going to do is going to turn the input string that the user entered into a number, into an integer. Okay, so now we need to add in our number two. So let's do num2 equals int, open brackets, input, close open brackets, open quotes, please enter your second, your second number, colon, space, close quotes, close bracket, and close bracket again. If we enter a string into our program, this will break, but we'll fix it later. Okay, so now that we've gotten our two numbers, we want to print out to the screen the answer. So let's take all these strings out of our last print, and what we're going to do is going to print num1 times num2, and that'll print out the program, or that'll print out our answer. So let's escape and right quit. We're going to exit out of this. So we're going to save and exit. And now let's try running it. So let's do python3 to 3.py. Now it says, welcome to multiply. Please enter your first number. So let's do five. And then it says, please enter your second number. So let's do five again. And we get the answer is 25. Okay, cool. So now even though we have a calculator on our computer, we now have a program that can do multiplication for us. So this is a great display of how useful input can be. This concludes our look at input and output in Python. Don't fear if you don't remember all of this, you can easily come back and rewatch this video to consolidate all of the information. If you have any questions and you can't find an answer after a quick Google search, feel free to leave it in the comments. Next we'll be covering selection. Thanks for watching.